a brand called Hometown USA or Lion Brand Yarns. And the colors I'm using are Aspen Tweed. And this is a four ounce skein of yarn. And the other color is Chicago Charcoal. And the size hook I'm using is a size N or nine millimeter hook. So you want to begin with your foundation chain, which I am um, going to start with 15 chain stitches. One, two, 13, 14, 15. And then all of these squares, I um, am working in a half double crochet. And so I'll yarn over and not the first chain from the hook, but in the second chain from the hook, I'll work my first half double crochet. And if you're not familiar with that, just yarn over, pull it through that chain stitch, yarn over, and then you pull it through all three loops on your hook. One, two, three. So you yarn over, put your hook in the chain stitch, pull it through that chain stitch loop, then yarn over and pull through all three. One, two, three. I have one chain stitch left, so I'm going to yarn over, put it through that last chain, yarn over, and then pull through the three loops. Now, some people will do two chains at the end of a row of half double crochets. I have opted to just do one chain and then turn my work. So I'll yarn over and then in that second loop from the hook, go through both loops of that V with your hook and then yarn over, pull it through, yarn over and pull through all three. So again, I'm going through both of the loops of these top of the stitches or V. They look like little V's. The last stitch of the second row kind of curves down the side. So you just want to yarn over and still make sure you pick up one, two, both loops of that V and then pull your yarn through. Yarn over, pull through the three loops, and do your one chain stitch, turn, and begin the third row. So you'll be working 14 half double crochets in each of these 10 rows. And that's how every square is done. 10 rows, 14 stitches, 14 half double crochets in each of those 10 rows with one chain stitch at the end of each row. Okie dokie, I have almost finished my 10 rows. I'm on the 10th row and I have two stitches, two half double crochets left to do. So here's one. And then on the last stitch, it's a little different. You'll put the hook through those V loops and pull it through. Now you've got the three loops on your hook and I'm not gonna use the charcoal gray. I'm gonna let that fall to the back. And now I'll pick up my, what was this called? Aspen or something? Yes, Aspen Tweed. That's a lovely name. And then I'll use that to pull through those three loops. One, two, three. I'm just kind of holding it in the back like that. And then work my chain, turn, and then I can just continue on with my new color. Now if I were working with a thinner regular yarn, 
I would uh, go through there. I would take these yarn ends. This isn't in an end yet. I haven't cut it. So I'll leave about four inches. I would take these two yarn ends. Here's the other one that we now have. And I would just work it underneath the top of these stitches and work it back through. But with this, um, when I tried to do that, it just made it too bulky under that because that's that would be the two loops of the V here plus these two yarns. That's four strands of yarn to do your stitch around and it just didn't look very good. So here's the bad news. Um, we're going to have to weave all of the yarn ends in when we're done. <laughs> and it, it just aesthetically it looks more pleasing. It looks better that way. Uh, maybe not as quite as convenient but it does look a lot better. So now we can just continue on doing our 10 rows of half double crochet with this lovely beautiful aspen, aspen tweed cream color. Okay, I am working on the 10th row, finishing it up. Here's the last two stitches. I thought I'd give you another opportunity to see um, us change the yarn color. So here's my last stitch for the half double crochet. So I'll pick up the V loops and yarn through. Now I've got three loops on my hook and I'll drop the cream, pick up the charcoal, and I'm holding that. I'm going to yarn over with the charcoal and pull through all three loops and then I'll do a chain stitch. Now I'm going to tug that, pull it a little snugger, and the cream also. I can cut a four inch tail of the cream now. Maybe. There. And now we'll get the hook back in there and can just continue with the charcoal yarn and do my 10 more rows. So now what you will do is another block of the gray so that you have gray, gray, cream, gray, cream and gray or charcoal whichever you want to call it so that you'll have five blocks all together so we'll work on that when you're done with your fifth square or your third bit of gray um, leave again another about four or five inch tail and then I just finished my half double crochet and then without doing a chain stitch I just pull that yarn through instead of the chain stitch to tie it off and pull that nice and snug and this is what that looks like <laughs> I'm gonna call this a panel I actually have the second panel done and so here is what that looks like cream gray cream gray cream and then when we put those together it's gonna be so cool I've completed five panels Now we need to do something with all of these yarn ends. So there are lots of different ways and if you have a favorite, go for it. What I do is use a very big needle with a big eye. And the best or easiest way for me to thread a needle is to fold it over the, the eye of the needle like that. It just makes it um, crisper to put through. 
it's hard to go through the end with all that loose end tufts. So I'm going to pull this a little bit and loop that through to secure it. And now I can go, it's kind of facing this way, so I'll go on this side and weave it through a few stitches on this side. Oh, almost ended my needle. And now we'll go back through toward the outside edge. And then give it a little bit of a tug because I was pulling it tight just to get the needle through. I guess my cat wants to say hi. <laughs> She's hanging on the screen um, on the outside of my window. Say hi, kitty. So what you'll want to do when you lay out your panels to make this nice checkerboard pattern is make sure that they're all going in the same direction. So this is where I started each panel is in this corner and this is where I ended. So they're all, uh, I guess we'll call this the right side facing up and then every start corner is right here on the same side. This panel and this panel I'm going to turn upside down like this. So now I'll slip stitch this, these two sides together, these two sides, these two sides, and these two sides together. And I'll have to get a close up to show you why. So let's get a close-up of what we're going to be picking up with our hook when we do these slip stitches. And where the line comes across your work, like this, on the edges, it does kind of a diagonal. The yarn goes diagonally. I call these the knots. So there's a knot here, 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 here in the gray. We're going to pick up two stitches in between each of the knots. Don't pick up the knots. They're tight and they're harder to get your hook through and they look messier. In between the two knots, there's what you can see, two and one. So if I turned it right side up, it looks like a capital Y. Jink, 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 then the knot. Here's the other, another Y. Jink, jink, and then the stem of the Y. Not here's the jink, jink, the U of the Y, and the stem of the Y. So sideways, that's what we'll be picking up. Is This will be a slip stitch and a slip stitch. Go over the knot, slip stitch where the two are, then the one. Skip the knot. Slip stitch here where the two are, and the one. And we're not going to pick up both of these. Now we'll put these together and because this is what we'll say right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side, and when I put these edges together like this, what you'll have is you match up your knots. So there's a knot and there's a knot and just align them perfectly. And now I have, here's the two pieces of yarn for the Y, the two there. Everything lines up. So you've got your set of two here, your set of two here, and your one and your one. Knot, knot, set of two, set of two, one, one, knot, knot. Set of two, set of two, line, just the one and the one and the knot and a knot and a knot. Um, so when we're 
doing the one and the one, you just go through both of those. But with the set of two, we're just going to pick up the outside ones. So it would be this one on the outside, not the inner one, and not this inner one here, right there. We're going to pick up the outer one right there. And we do the slip stitch. Okay, we're ready to get going. I'm going to use the Aspen Tweed, the cream color yarn, and I'm just going to hold the end of the yarn to the back of my work. And now I have the knots lined up. Here, two knots here, two knots, two knots. I'm going to pinch that together. And it's harder to see it on the very end where we're starting, but here are the two parallel sets of yarn, and here's the two parallel sets here, and then here's the one and the one. So here we go. Here's the outside one here, and here's the outside here. And then just pull the yarn through. And now I can just pick up the one. Of, it's just a single. Oh, I'm slip stitching. It's tempted to do a single crochet there. Skip the two knots. Now I'm going to pick up. Here's two, two. I'm going to do the outside, outside. Pick up this outside, that outside. Do your slip stitch. Here are the knots. So I'm just going to pick up this one. They're just by themselves. They're really easy to find and pick up. There are the knots. Here's my set of two. So I'm going to get the outside strand of yarn here and the outside strand of yarn there. Slip stitch that and pick up the ones that are just by themselves. Here are the knots. Here's the outside. The outside of the pair. Here are the knots. Here's the single one. Those are always easy. And you just follow that all the way down there are the knots. Here's the pairs here, here, or the set of two. Pick up the outside. And I'm going to turn off the camera and continue working all the way down. That's what that looks like right there with your slip stitches. I'm getting close to the end. Outside, I just passed the knot, picking up the outside yarn of the sets, and then the last ones by themselves. Now I'm just gonna cut my yarn. When you get to the end of crocheting your two strips together, Another way to deal with this yarn end is to just pull the yarn end through like you usually do, but what I am going to do and see if it helps make it more secure, I heard that this works, is to put it through that loop twice instead of once. And that's supposed to make it tighter more secure knot. So this will be an experiment to see if it really works. And then we'll just get the yarn and oops pull it through like we did all the other yarn ends.
another thing I noticed is you don't want to have those too tight because it Make sure you don't pull these yarn ends too tight because it will make it pucker. And then after I've done that in a couple of spots, I want to bring the yarn end to the back of this afghan and I'm calling the back the one that has the ridges like this instead of that side. So this will be the front. This will be the back. So I'm going to bring the yarn end to this back side and then pull it down through the work a little bit before I trim it off with some scissors. And if you want to do this with a needle, it might go faster. But you do want to put it through a few stitches and I like to choose tight ones just to make sure it's going to stay like that okay so now we have this one done slide that down and now we're going to hook the next panel on. This is the right side, this is the wrong side, this is the right side. So wrong side, right side. We're going to put those together and do this seam here. If we don't do it that way, then these edges aren't going to line up. I'm going to start by lining them up, pinching it together, here are my knots, knots, knots. Here's the singles, doubles. I'm picking up the outside of the doubles to start with. And just laying the yarn on the back with about a seven inch tail. Pulling that through. Now I'm picking up the singles, slip stitch that, skip the knot, pick up the outsides, slip stitch. Now I'll just finish up these seams and finish up this baby blanket or afghan. Okay. Now it's all done and it looks fantastic. Here's the back side. And that side looks really good too. I really like the way this connecting crochet turned out. On this afghan, I'm going to put a little decorative edge on it, really simple. With the right side facing me, I'm just gonna start in the middle of one of the squares and I'm going to pick up both strands of this very bottom edge. Pick up both strands of yarn and I'm just going to do a slip stitch to secure the yarn. And then a double crochet in the same place under those two strands of yarn. and then I'll work a chain stitch. Then I will skip a set of stitches and do a double crochet in the next set and do a chain and then just keep going along the bottom. Double crochet, skip a set here and then do a double crochet in the next set or stitch and a chain and then I won't pick up these two skip double crochet skip double crochet with the chain in between each 
double crochet. So I'm going to pause it till I get to this corner and then we'll go up one of these, I call them the raw edge. Now I'm at the corner. I did a chain here, so I'll just do another double crochet in this corner. And now instead of chaining one, I'm going to chain two. One, two. And in that same space, I'm going to do another double crochet. And then chain two, one, two, and a third double crochet for the corner. And chain two. And now on this raw edge, I'm going to pick up like we did when we were connecting these bands together, the rows. I'm going to pick up where there are two pieces of yarn and I'll do two chain stitches in between each one because they're fairly spaced apart. There will be one here, 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 here. It's right below um, or right, right to the right <laughs> this line that you can kind of see in your crocheting. So I did the chain two and the first one is right here to the right of the right of this row. And the two strands of yarn will go in there and chain two. You need to chain two because these are just spaced farther apart. Here is that row or that line. So here are the two strands of yarn I'm going to go underneath. Chain two. Here's the line. Here are the two strands of yarn. I'm going to go underneath. Chain two. So on this raw edge, you will do a, two chains in between each double crochet instead of one, like you do on the more finished edge. And then work your way around. When we get this raw edge done to the other corner, that's when you'll work three double crochets with two chains in between in each corner. And then when we do this, side has that same finished type of edge that you can just do one chain stitch in between each double crochet and then you skip and they're really easy to find on the top and the bottom it's the sides that are a little more difficult so work your way around and we'll see what it looks like back where I started and so now I'm going to do a chain stitch and do a slip stitch in that slip stitch that I started with. Now I can cut my yarn and tie it off and weave in the end. Here's the afghan with its finished edge. Here's the back and here's the front. Oh, I think it looks beautiful. I really like it. Hope you do too. Have fun!